the Book of Fate. Such a simple name, yet one that holds great power. There have been many other names for this tome, but none demanded such awe and fear. Many people dreaded the nature of this book, under the firm belief that their fates were not their own, that their destinies were pre-written, pre-decided, out of their hands. As a great mage, I set out on a mission to find this book and bring it to humanity. I would be the one to defy fate. No longer will the book decide our destinies. My journey was long and arduous, spanning many lifetimes. I dreaded that I would expire long before I ever found the book, but along the way, I learned of many ways to cheat death. Passing my soul to another younger body, employing magic and medicine to boost my life expectancy, even employing new sciences as the millennia passed by to replace myself with things that would last longer. But now at long last, after millions of years of travel, I reached the edge of reality. The sky surrounds me on all sides, even below. In front of me, atop a broken landscape of rocks and stars, sat a castle. The castle itself was not what anyone would expect. The stone was dull, no colorful banners or flags flew, and the condition of the building looked to have been deteriorating for the past few centuries, completely unkempt. For so long I expected the palace which held the Book of Fate to be extravagant, built from polished white stone with golden runes and fantastic lights and flags everywhere, inhabited by the children of the gods in every inconceivable form. But this place looked dead. I entered the castle. The air was cold and still, more like a crypt than a safe haven for an artifact of godly power. I called out, a stupid act for anyone who came unprepared, but I had millions of years of experience, thousands of magic spells, and an arsenal of powerful weapons with me. I had a lot of time to prepare, and I was ready for anything. All that answered me were the echoes of my own voice, and even those sounded dead. I wandered through the ruined halls until I finally found the throne room. The spacious place stood just as empty as the rest of the castle. My eyes lit up as I stared at the end of the room. Rather than a throne, a large lectern stood, with a massive leather-bound tome set on it. I ran across the room, the distance between me and my goal finally closing. I'd done it. I found it. From now on, humanity's fate was its own. I reached the book, and my heart sank slightly. The book itself, like the castle, was plain and unimpressive. Brown leather with a sewn edge, unkempt and dirty, and the bindings holding the book together were just old twine woven through the covers. The word fate was etched into the dusty cover. I opened the book. Immediately I saw, in faded ink, many paragraphs about the first days of humanity. But rather than read, I gazed upon the pages themselves. The paper had yellowed with many centuries of age and was tattered at the edges. How could this be the book of fate? I turned the pages through many chapters, detailing the dawn and fall of every era of mankind. No passage held falsehood. Every word whispered true. Every event had a place in history. Then, after several hours of flipping pages, the words ended and the next pages were blank. I stood confused. Was this a place for fates not yet written? As if to answer, new text materialized on the paper. As the ancient wizard pondered over the book of fate, his confusion grew. Where were the fates? Where were the destinies? He watched in curious awe as the passages wrote themselves before his eyes. A simple action that would hint at the true nature of the tome he'd hunted for so long. A nature that every book holds. The written words chronicled his thoughts truthfully. Chronicled, that's what it meant. The Book of Fate did not control the destinies of humanity across time, it merely recorded them. That's all it was, the universe's one ultimate history book. And, the tome continued, a complete waste of his time. The wizard now realized that his one greatest act of heroism was all for naught. He remembered all of the lives he'd claimed, the families he'd left behind, the love and glory he threw away, all to find a book that had long since been left to decay. The wizard turned away from the useless book, shoulders slumped as the fatigue of millennia settled in his mind. He left behind the dusty ruins and his quest and purpose for life. In the quiet throne room, the pages rustled in an unseen breeze, 
new words scrawled across the parchment. He returned to his vessel in despair as he navigated through the meteors that surround the Book of Fate's final place of rest. His new lack of attention cost him everything when one larger stone barreled toward his ship. The text paused. After a minute, the Book of Fate began writing again about another human somewhere in the universe who is listening to this story.